So guys, there's been a lot of talk about how classes are going to scale in the future due to a recent video from World Chig that predicts how classes are going to scale based on item level increases throughout every patch. And this form of calculation has predicted that some classes will perform much worse than people originally thought, hence the controversy. But today I thought I'd take the time to tell you how classes will actually scale in Wrath of the Lich King Classic because as much as this is a very well made video, you can't really take this information as the word of God. Predicting how classes will scale based on item level alone is a very flawed concept. Power spikes don't just come from getting better gear. Fair enough, sometimes when classes reach certain stat thresholds, their DPS can spike by a significant margin. This happened to me in early Legion when I was playing an Enhancement Shaman. As soon as I got, I think it was 20% haste or crit, I honestly can't remember, but what I do remember is my DPS blowing up as soon as I got that stat to 20%. But there's normally other determining factors as to why a class gets a huge power spike later in the expansion and they start to crawl up the DPS meters, so let's go through what they could be. First of all, it can be based on weapon speeds or weapon damage, like for instance how hunters getting the Skyforge crossbow will allow marksmen to start crawling up the meters, especially when they get a decent amount of armor penetration. It can also be set bonuses, like for instance the Fire Mage 4-piece tier 8 bonus, where they have a chance to not consume their hot street proc on a pyroblast, and therefore they can have a chance to pop two instant power blasts in a row. That's obviously a big DPS boost. And then sometimes it can be trinkets, obviously especially for classes that can take advantage of snapshotting with snapshotting dots, or what we've seen already in phase one with even holy DK, you know, as soon as they get the meteorite whetstone with a dark moon card, they absolutely pump because it snapshots the gargoyle. Now these things you can very simply put in a graph and make calculations of. These are not simple stat increases, because they are normally proc chances, which are harder to mathematically calculate. So you can't really accurately predict how much DPS a class is going to do in the future based on item level and stats alone. You need an accurate and reliable sim that will make sound calculations of these proc chances. Now the problem is that even sims rarely do this correctly. I know for instance that not every trinket is working correctly on the Death Knight sim, because I sometimes see absolutely no DPS difference when using different trinkets. By the way guys, if you liked the video so far, maybe you want to subscribe to the channel, it really does help out and allows me to continue to make videos. But anyway, let's carry on. So what else can we use to predict how classes can scale? You know, can't we just look at private server data, you might ask? Well, looking at private server data can only really be an educated guess, because scripting on private servers has proven to be different than it is in Wrath Lich King Classic because sometimes, obviously the private servers are wrong, but rather hilariously, Blizzard have been wrong with their own scripting of their own game. A small example of that that many people probably don't know about, Death Knights have recently, since the pre-patch, been able to use Corpse Explosion on their ghoul for insane damage every 30 seconds, but it has recently been shadow nerfed, so that cooldown is now one minute, which is a big nerf to their overall damage, so they're less viable now for speedruns. Luckily, it doesn't affect their boss damage though, but this is actually the correct original Wrath of Lich King scripting that wasn't in the game from launch. So looking at private servers, you are essentially theorycrafting a totally different product, usually anyway. Sometimes when you look at these ultra detailed private server guides, they can be wrong, and then they can also be correct. To be honest, they usually are correct, but on private servers you have a much smaller community of theory crafters, and they never had accurate Warcraft log data, whereas now we have hundreds of thousands of players on class discords nerding out with loads of Warcraft log information. So you can look at private server info like this big chat that I did find online, but you can only take it with a pinch of salt, and remember that just because a class is performing badly on logs on live doesn't mean it performs badly in-game classic example of this is the Faro Druid. Faro Druid greatly benefits from the Hysteria buff, well, whatever it got renamed to in Holy Frenzy, from the Blood Death Knight since it scales up your physical damage. And Faro does predominantly physical damage, if not 100% physical damage. I'm not exactly a Faro expert myself, I have to admit. 
But the problem is that Hysteria doesn't actually appear on Warcraft logs. So whatever DPS benefit you got from that buff won't appear on logs, but obviously it will appear on the meters in game. And also Affliction Warlocks could do little cheesing snapshotting strategies with tricks of the trade, but it's not going to appear on Warcraft logs either. This is why when you look at tier lists from a month ago, even my own tier list, things are a little different because they only again educated guesses based on private server info and we didn't know what was going to count on logs and what wasn't. You may also want to ask, well, can't we just look at data from back in the day in the original Wrath of the Lich King? Well, the problem is that there were class changes throughout Wrath of the Lich King's lifetime, so predicting how classes will perform in Ordoir and Trilever... Don't worry, I'm not having a stroke there. Ordoir and Trilever Grand Crusader is entirely futile. Looking at ICC data, however, is a much better guess. Scott made a pretty good video about this a while ago looking at the data of ICC DPS numbers and this is the most accurate thing you can probably look at. However, this only deals with how classes will perform in ICC so we can't really make accurate predictions on the other phases. Plus, players are very very different now. We have much better hardware, access to top quality information, so even these results could be different in Rafflech King Classic, Ice Crown Citadel. Because there are a lot of specs that are slept on, and there's certain strategies that are probably quite slept on. A classic example of that is the dual wielding and holy death knight. I mean, I definitely wasn't dual wielding, well, that wasn't that many dual wielding and holy death knights back in the original Ice Crown Citadel. So who knows how that's going to be different. And there also wasn't crazy stuff like snake weaving and rogues using spell power weapons to boost fan of knives damage, etc, etc. So really, you simply cannot predict the future, because Raffle Lich King Classic it may as well be a totally different game than original Raffle Lich King Classic. And there's honestly no point talking about this topic until there's very accurate sim data, or at least we get to check out the raids for ourselves on the PTR, but then even the PTR is subject to changes and stuff might be bugged on the PTR. And if TBC Classic is anything to go off, there's a good chance things will turn out differently. Warriors and Rogues perform better than they did on private servers, and everyone thought that Warlocks and Hunters were going to be the gods of TBC, but, I mean, to be honest, it really turned out to be Arcane Mages. Warlocks and Hunters were very good, don't get me wrong, but Arcane surprised everyone. So the main takeaway of this video is that realistically you cannot accurately predict how classes are going to perform in the future, and whenever you hear people make predictions, you have to automatically take it with a pinch of salt. It's always healthy to challenge everything you hear and then do your own research before believing something. It's actually a good lesson for life. I mean, I've personally made predictions in the past, but again, I've just based it on educated guesses on private server data. So honestly, all we can really do is wait and see. So to answer the question, how will classes scale in Raffa Lichkin Classic? Well, my answer is, probably rather disappointingly for people watching the video, is you can't predict it. Because you can't predict the future, and at the end of the day, who cares, dude? Like, just play the game. Take a chill pill, grab yourself a beer, and go kill some dragons. But on a serious note, if you really care about always playing the top dog DPS spec in every single phase, I'd always recommend hesitating on using your character boost, because... You might boost a character at the beginning of Rafflech King that turns out to be not as good as you thought. But if you have already used your character boost, there's no need to worry because very soon I will be releasing an ultimate alt power leveling guide for every single class in the game. Anyway guys, I'm going to end the video there. Be sure to also check out my second channel, Night Goblin, for any videos that I'm going to make that are not related to World of Warcraft. Ciao.